Hey everyone, this is Matt with the Curbsiders Internal Medicine Podcast, and I'm going to be showing you how to create your own audio podcast using GarageBand. I'll show you the basics that you need to know how to use this program. I'm using the Scarlett 2i2 USB audio recorder for this, or audio interface, and I'm using two microphones, and I'm going to show you how to record to two channels. First, you open GarageBand, you're going to select Empty Project, and you're going to select your input device, which could be a built-in microphone, or in my case, I'm using the Scarlett 2i2 USB audio interface, and I'm going to select the built-in output. Now, you should select Scarlett 2i2. For the purpose of this recording, I have to select built-in output, but you should select the same either built-in input, built-in output, for your input device and output device. Now I hit choose and I'm going to get this screen where I choose a track type. So I'm going to record using a microphone and I'm going to select input 1 to start with. And again, my instrument connected is a Scarlett 2i2. And I click this. Now there's a bunch of unnecessary stuff here which you can get rid of. Um, first of all, you don't need this, you don't need this, those are kind of count-ins and those are more for music. And also, you don't need the beats end time, I usually just click time so I know how long I've been recording for. And next, I'm going to add another audio track because I have a co-host who's going to be recording with me. So I'm going to select input 2 for my co-host mic. I have two XLR mics hooked up to my Scarlett. 2i2 and I hit create. Okay, and now I have two audio tracks, so they are not yet recording anything. And what I'm going to do is two finger click on either one of the tracks and hit configure track header. And this record enable button is what you want to click. I don't know why it doesn't come automatically clicked, but it should. So now if I click that, Okay, I have two mics, and you can see when I talk into mic number one, I get this volume recording here, and green is good, yellow getting a little loud, red is bad, and down here you can see that my second mic, because I'm in the same room with it, is picking me up a little bit, which is okay, and mic positioning, you can mess around with that to minimize the echo crosstalk between mics, and if I pick up my second mic and talk into that, I get a bigger waveform on that one. So now I am going to start recording by hitting record and you can see that I'm recording on microphone number one and I get a nice waveform on that track and when I switch over to microphone number two I get a waveform on that track and to get the view a little better for you I am going to uncheck this and this because those really don't add anything and now you can see that I'm getting a nice waveform here. So I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to hit this button to go to the back and now I'm going to edit this up. So I let's say I don't need this section here, it's just blank and I can click this. When I hover over the track I get this symbol here and that means I can slide to shorten or lengthen the track. So I'm going to shorten it down there, and same thing here, I can shorten this part down here. And if I play it back, and you can see that I'm recording on microphone. Let's say I didn't like this word here, and I wanted to take this out. So I can pinch, or uh, pinch the way that you would when you are looking at a photo on your phone, and I can move this playhead position to the word I want to cut out, in this, which is the word that right here. So I'm going to hit Control T, and that has created a cut point there. It's also known as splitting the regions at the playhead. So it's actually Command T, sorry, Command T, not Control T. And now I can highlight that section and cut it out. And when I play, and you can see... I'm recording on microphone number one, and I get a nice waveform on that track.
but that left a gap there, so I don't want the gap. So what I'm going to do is highlight both of these tracks. You can also hit Shift and click one then the other, and you would select them both. And I can slide this back here, and then I can play. And you can see I'm recording on microphone, and that gap is now gone. And that's pretty much how you go through an audio recording editing. So you, you put the playhead position where you want it, and you hit Command T, Command T, delete that section, drag this one over, and that's how you can create artificial space, or that's how you can cut place pieces and move them around. Now if I highlight all this, I can click anywhere, and I can drag this whole section together, and I, what I'm going to do is make a little room here because I want to put some music in, and to do that I'm going to add another track, doesn't matter if you select audio input number one or input number two. And I'm going to hit create. Get rid of these again. And I'm going to put the tracks in the order. So I have one, two, and three. And I want to put some music in at the beginning. So we have these loops, Apple loops, that come for free with the program. You can click on the favorite symbol and you can bring your music loop in there. And I want my voice to kind of overlap with the music loop. And let's see how this sounds. And you can see... Okay, the music's a little loud. This is the final trick that I wanted to show you, something that I think is essential for editing. When you add music in, you're going to want to add automation. And automation, you hit the A key, and you get this line here that you can highlight. And you can add points to that line, and these points can be dragged up or down to make your sound fade higher or lower. And there's many ways, many things you can do with this. And you can see I'm recording. And you can there there you can hear that the the track volume went down on the left coast piano as my voice came in. And let's say that I had two guests. One guest was pretty quiet, and the other guest was pretty loud. I could raise the volume on the guest that was too quiet, and I could lower the volume on the guest that was too loud. And then when I play it, and you can see uh, that, that guest would be very loud, and, I switch over and this to guest number two, would be I more quiet. A waveform on that track, or more loud. and to get. I wanted to show you how to export your track once you've finished editing it. Now, the first step here is there is this little slider at the top, and I just want to make sure a lot of the times you'll have 10, 20, 30 extra seconds at the end of your project, and you're going to want to slide this down just so that it's right around the area where your track ends. That way you don't have a bunch of extra silence at the end of your audio recording. This track is ready to go. I've already done all my editing. And that will, let's say hypothetically, I've done all my editing. Now I want to send it out as an MP3. So I'm going to share this file and I'm going to export to disk. And what this is going to do is going to mix all three of those tracks into a single MP3 file. And it will sound just like it did when I played it within GarageBand with the fades and the edits. So you can title it whatever you want. So test and you can select the quality. Most people would tell you that 128 kilobits per second is a perfectly good quality. If you go down to the low quality you probably would be able to tell a difference but if you run it at 128 you probably wouldn't notice much of a difference if you did any of the higher quality but the higher quality files are going to be much bigger. I always do my files at 128 and I think that should be okay for you and you want to send them out as an mp3 file and you hit export and you can pick your destination and that's it. You can bring the file into iTunes and you can edit the ID3 tags in there and those are important for your search engine optimization and just so that people can identify your track and find find it you really want to have the track labeled properly 
That's pretty much all you need to know to record an audio podcast in GarageBand. Once again, my name is Matt Watto. I'm with the Curbsiders Internal Medicine Podcast, and I hope you found this video helpful. I know I would have loved to have this video when I was starting podcasting a couple years ago. So thanks. Let me know what you think in the comments, and ask questions if you want some more advanced tips.